So the question arises, why would Donald Trump care about Prince Harry? So there's a story out today. Forbes magazine has got a story where it says Trump suggests Prince Harry could be deported over alleged drug use. It's frustrating, really. I mean, why would he care? So he says, uh, the story says, former President Donald Trump said in an exclusive interview with British network GB News that Prince Harry shouldn't have special privileges if authorities discover he lied about drug use on his visa application. And I've got the interview coming up in just a second. But it it's really, they're trying to make it about special privileges. But the thing about it is, folks, I mean, just look at this trial that's going on in New York right now where Donald Trump can't post the 464 million dollar bond in that civil fraud case so in this whole process he's really looking for special privileges because to appeal it you have to post the bond and he's saying essentially i can't do it and he's looking for special privileges so that he can appeal the case without having to post the bond so i mean don't give me this whole thing about special privileges donald trump you know that that you want to see what's fair and if, and if Prince Harry has done something wrong on his visa application, then that's a special privilege and you're going you're gonna to take care of that. So he goes on in the interview to say, we ha- we'll have to see if they know something about the drugs. And if he lied, they'll have to take appropriate action. He told Nigel Farage, who is like the biggest stooge in the United Kingdom, in an interview filmed, of course, at Mar-a-Lago, that's going to that's out today. So when Farage pushed Trump and asked if appropriate action meant not staying in the country, Trump said, oh, I don't know. You'll have to tell me. So the whole root of this thing evidently is coming down to this, folks. So, you know, Donald Trump is following the the conservative lead on this. I mean, he's a follower. The Heritage Foundation um, is the one that's at the root of this. The article says Prince Harry's potential drug use is currently at the center of a lawsuit from conservative think tank Heritage Foundation against the Department of Homeland Security. In his 2023 memoir, Spare, Harry wrote that he has used marijuana, cocaine, and psychedelic drugs, leading the Heritage Foundation to argue that the Biden administration failed to vet his application when it granted him a visa. The lawsuit claims the widespread and continuous coverage of Harry's drug use calls into question whether the government appropriately vetted his visa application and followed protocol. When it approved the request, the BBC reported, lawyers for the Biden administration said last month that the memoir isn't proof that Harry took the drugs and that he could have embellished the stories to sell books, you think? In February, while speaking at the Conservative Political Action Conference, Trump had similar sentiments about the print, so he keeps bringing it up over and over and over again, folks. And take a look at this. So this is Boundless.com, and this company... uh, operates in this field with people that have had drug use with their lawyers trying to get visas for people that have had drug use. So yes, you do have to disclose drug use. It says potential impact on visa applications while disclosing past drug use does not automatically result in a denial of a U.S. visa. It is a factor that immigration officials consider when evaluating an applicant's eligibility. Drug use is viewed as a potential violation of U.S. immigration laws and can raise concerns about an applicant's moral character and their ability to adhere to U.S. laws and regulations. The severity and recency of drug use, the types of drugs involved, and any related criminal history are all factors that can influence the outcome of a visa application. Each case is assessed on an individual basis, taking into account the circumstances surrounding the drug use and the applicant's rehab efforts. So how does the Heritage Foundation have standing when the DHS is assessing each person on an individual basis and it's ultimately up to them to decide? I mean, it's just one of those situations where they're just trying to get publicity um, out of this for some weird reason. So it says consequences of providing false information. If you provide false information or intentionally withhold information regarding past drug use in a visa application, it's considered fraud. So it goes on and it says that if an individual is already in the United States on a visa or a green card and their past drug use comes to light, their immigration status can be jeopardized. A visa or green card can be revoked, leading to deportation proceedings. So here's the interview, folks, with Nigel Farage. Have a listen. She, you know, I would say, although she wouldn't show it because she was strong and smart, 
but I would imagine they broke her heart. The things that they were saying were so bad and Talking so about the Queen. And uh, she was in her 90s and hearing this stuff. I, I think they broke her heart. No, I it think, was horrible. I think they it really hurt her very but bad. But if he's, if he's... So, folks, he's talking about the Queen here. Uh, why is he postulating on something that the Queen may have felt or didn't feel... Um, it, it's all very strange, isn't it? It's all very strange. And, you know, the truth is, when Donald Trump went to the UK, I don't think they were really enthused about seeing him there on that state visit. They really weren't. I mean, the whole royal family was sort of like, oh, geez, now what are we going to do? <laughs> we have to go through with it. Stiff up a lip. We have to do it. on his visa form. You know, doesn't doesn't, know. doesn't the truth need to come out? We'll have I to. mean, should, should he get special privileges that nobody else does? No, and we'll have to see. Uh, like Trump if does. If they know something about the drugs, and if he lied, you will have to take appropriate action. Appropriate action? Yeah. Which might mean not staying oh, in Oh, I don't know. You'll have to tell me. You just have to tell me. Uh, you would, <laughs> don't you, you hate that? They would have known this a long time ago. Mm, you would. But I thought they were mm. really disrespectful to the family, to mm. the royal family. I'm a big fan of oh, this is rich. the concept of the royal family and the royal family. Now, I'm a little prejudiced because I thought the Queen was incredible. I mean, think of it. All those years, 75 years, she, she's almost never made a mistake. Right. It's, it's, okay. It's... okay. The translation on never made a mistake, folks, is that she never had cognitive dysfunction. Like Donald Trump, right? Always thinks he's running against Obama, you know, or something crazy. And... Um, she never made a mistake like that because she didn't exhibit cognitive dysfunction. That's what he's talking about here, folks. So talking about Nigel Farage here, just for a minute, let me tell, give you a little background on Nigel Farage. He is such a stooge. Listen to this, this story, and it, it's sad that he almost died in it, but it, it's stupid sad. I thought I'd liven up the general election of 2010. Really? On the morning of election day, uh, getting into a very small light aircraft, rather like a tractor actually with wings, <laughs> um, and attempting to tow a banner <laughs> around the Buckingham constituency saying, vote for your country, vote UKIP. Uh, things went horrendously oh, wrong. you don't uh, say. The banner got twisted around the tail yeah. of the aeroplane, and we inevitably were going to crash. Really? Uh, it's uh, strange. Uh, initially, uh, you're filled with really? fear, uh, and as the ground rushes up, a sort of sense of resignation, kind of a feeling. Of, resignation. Well, if this is it, let's hope it's all over quickly. Uh, the pictures oh. from that crash are indeed very dramatic, and I've considered myself ever since that moment oh. very, very lucky to be alive. Look at the look at the boffo face there. You know, he's got the. Oh, oh, it looks like a poor moosed creature, and he's and he's lucky to be alive, and he's got this little. What what is that? That that that, that little button there. You know, the blue ribbon. Is that like for the biggest fool in the UK? And he's, he's walking away from the ruins of that plane? I mean, folks, what a stooge. I mean, and again, why does Donald Trump care about Prince Harry? Why? Why, why would he care? Let it go. Let it go. Isn't there a song, let it, let it, let it go?